Okay, in this video, STAT1150, we're going to talk about Z-scores. And we've already talked about Z-scores before. But guys, remember, we're getting into big boy, big girl stuff now because we're starting to examine uh, the dynamics and the relationship between samples and populations. Now, um, you know, that said, one of the... Uh, there's actually two important things I want to try to stress in this video about Z-scores. And one of them, it's very useful to compare scores from different distributions. Now, before I get there, please keep in mind, guys, this is huge. This is something you really need to, to, to get a, a thorough grasp of, uh, of the bigger picture of what I'm trying to teach you. You need to understand that when we have a sample, we calculate a z-score the same way as we do with the population, but the notation, notation changes. We take x, which is the score we're trying to find the z-score of, and this could be uh, a gestation period, an ACT, a GR, it could be whatever measurement we have, minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. But when we move into this big boy, big girl stuff called relationship between samples and populations, and we start to examine uh, z-scores within a population, the notation changes, but finding the z-score is exactly the same. We take the score minus the mean, but guys remember from previous videos that the notation for mean changes from x-bar to mu, when we move from a sample to a population divided by sigma, which is still the standard deviation, but it's the population standard deviation. So our focus on this video is to look at z-scores not from a sample, but from a population. Okay. Now, again, back to this useful uh, tool of z-scores number one. Uh, useful to compare scores from different distributions. Let's say that Amy and John are talking about their college days or their pre-college days, and um, they're arguing about who is the smartest. All right, Amy and John are good friends, so I'm going to pick on them in this video. And uh, let's say Amy took the SAT, which I don't believe she did, but let's say that Amy scored a 680 on the SAT, and let's say that John scored, uh, took the ACT, and he scored a 28. And they're arguing about who scored the highest. And Amy looks at John and says, well, clearly I scored the highest because everybody knows that 680 is a bigger number than 28. Well, it doesn't work that way because these are from different distributions. So to be able to find kind of the relative standing, we could calculate z-scores. So let's say that Amy does some <clears throat> investigation and she finds that the year that she took the SAT that the mean was 510 with a standard deviation of 100. Let's say that John decide, finds that the year he took the ACT the mean was 21 and the standard deviation was 6. So I could calculate the z-score for Amy by taking her score minus the mean over the standard deviation. So guys, really the only way you can mess these up is do something goofy and not, uh, not do order of operations. So here I would do 680 uh, minus, uh, what was it, 510. Divided by 100, and uh, again, just make sure that, let me get that where you can see that, just make sure that the uh, information in the numerator is in parentheses. So I think we all see it's going to be uh, 1.7, okay? Because z-scores are typically rounded to two places, as are most numerical summary measurements. Now we can do a calculate a z-score for John. John scored a 28 uh, over a 21 and has a standard deviation of 6. So to calculate John's z-score, we get a 1.17. 
Now, although the 680 and the 28 aren't on comparable distributions, aren't in the same distributions, so they're not comparable, when we calculate a z-score, we create what are called standard scores. These are standardized measures. So these things are not now comparable because the 1.7 tells me that Amy's score 680 is 1.7 standard deviations above the mean. John's score of 1.17 tells me that his score is 1.17 standard deviations above the mean. Since 1.7 is higher than 1.17 and these two are comparable, Amy would win the argument. Now, what happens is when I draw a distribution of ACT scores. I have a mean of 21 and a standard deviation of 6 and I'm only going to go one standard deviation above the mean and one standard deviation below the mean. Now if I come right below that and I'm going to do my best to draw I'm just not a fan of PowerPoint. I like to kind of draw it out. But if I come down here and do SATs with a mean of 510 and a standard deviation of, what, 100? Even though these things are on completely dis different distributions, I can see that a score of 510 would be the score, same as the score of 21 in this distribution versus that distribution. I can see that a score of 610 would be equivalent to a score of 27 in an ACT. So a 610 SAT would be equivalent to a 27 ACT. A score of 410 would be equivalent to a 15 <coughs> in the ACT. Why? Because a score of 410 is one standard deviation below the mean. 510 has a z-score of 0, 0 standard deviations above or below the mean, and a score of 610 in the SETs is 1 standard deviation above. Up here in ACTs, 21 has a z-score of 0, 27 has a z-score of 1, 15 has a z-score of negative 1. So when I compare these standardized measures, I can see that they have the same z-scores, so they would be equivalent measurements from different distributions. Now, let's say that we want to come down and create a distribution of these standard scores. So I want to map this zero down to a zero. I want to map this 1 down to a 1. I want to map this negative 1 down to a negative 1. And I want to do the same thing with a 2, and a negative 2, and a negative 3, and a negative 3. Guys, what have I done? I have just created a distribution of z-scores. And from this normal distribution and that normal distribution, I could do gestation periods, I could do IQs, I could do all kinds of things that form normal distributions. I can map all these down to what we call a standard normal. distribution. Guys, of the standard normal distribution, what's the mean? Well, the mean's always the value sits right in the middle, right? So we can say that z-scores form a normal distribution with mean 0, 
standard deviation is the distance from here to here. Uh, obviously, that's kind of <laughs> easy to figure out. One. So, guys, as far as normal distributions, how many of those do we have? Well, you might be argued that we have infinitely many. We've already seen that ACTs form a normal distribution with a mean of 20.9, uh, standard deviation 5.9, and these things vary depending on the year. So you'll see me sometimes call the mean 21 and 6 and 20.7 and 5.2. just depends on the year, but there's one particular year I do know that it was 20.9 and 5.9. Uh, SATs, mean of 510, standard deviation 103. I think that was the year two, two, 2016. Gestation periods. Form a normal distribution of 266 days, standard deviation 16 days. <clears throat> IQs, normal distribution score of uh, 100, standard deviation 15. Guys, trust me, many, many, <laughs> many standard dv or I'm sorry, uh, distributions that form a normal distribution. But there's only one. standard normal distribution. These means up here vary. The standard normal distribution is a normal distribution, but the mean doesn't vary. It's always zero. Standard deviation varied 5.9, 103, 16, 15, yada, 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 yada. It never varies down here. It is always one. So guys, it makes it very easy to create a new class of problems. What's the probability that Z is greater than or equal to 1.2? And students will look at this problem and they will lose their minds. And I'm like, why? <laughs> if I put the probability that an IQ was greater than or equal to 130, they would jump right on stack crunch or the graphing calculator or whatever it may be, and they would answer it. But when they look at this, they lose their mind. They're like, well, I don't know how to work that. Well, why not? Z-scores are what? What should you think when you see Z-scores? Standard, normal, distribution, approximately normal, means zero, standard deviation one. So gang, you are going to do exactly, let me go uh, split screen here. You're gonna do exactly what you did before. You're gonna go to stat, you're gonna go to calculator, you're gonna go to normal, you're gonna go to standard because we're not doing between two numbers. And look at the default. The default is for z-scores. Mean zero, standard deviation one. We want greater than or equal to 1.2. Compute it. It'll give you a graph starting at 1.2. It'll shade the area above. And it'll give you the answer of 0.1151. which is what you need, okay? What's the probability? Negative 1.2. I like I always get a phone call when I'm... putting up a video. So what's the probability <clears throat> that we random, randomly select a z-score? And it's between negative 1.2 and 1.8. All right, guys, go to your calculator. Go between, because we're between two numbers, right? We're not between two numbers up here. This is the standard. Click the between. It's got the default of 0 and 1. Over here, I want negative 1.2. And over here, I want 1.8. Hit compute. The area is 0.849. Guys, I used to teach this using R and the graphing calculator. I can't even tell you how much easier this is uh, than using those other two 
means of technology. Much, much, much easier this way. Uh, you got to get into Infinity, like E99 and things with the calculator. Trust me, this is just a lot easier. So, um, one more. What's the probability our Z is less than or equal to negative uh, 4.0? I want to get into this because this will get uh, into an interesting uh, dynamic with the, um, with the output. So we'll go to standard, mean zero, standard deviation one, less than or equal, I need negative four, and compute. Okay, well it didn't do that. I thought it would give, uh, give it in scientific notation, um, but um, it doesn't. So uh, point one, two, three, four, is it four zeros? One, two, yeah, so 3, 2. Uh, I always go to two significant digits, um, which means non-zeros. Uh, but, but irregardless, you'll put this answer into StatCrunch. I'm sorry, not in StatCrunch. Into my StatLab uh, as, um, as it requests. So guys, remember, don't flip out on me. Don't lose your mind. When we talk about the probability of a Z-score... Just think, we're dealing with a standard normal distribution. There's only one of them. Normal means zero, standard deviation one. And over there on the uh, stack crunch, just work the problems as we've done before. All right? Guys, take care.